Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 55 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, where I'm making Pissile Fuel, slowly but surely. Uh, I haven't sped up any of these machines just yet, but we probably will at some point in the near future. Uh, but for now, we're just chilling on Pissile Fuel, and as you can see, a lot of the machines have started to back stuff. Uh, I like this new addition to, to Mechanism, where, you know, when there's something wrong, it kind of highlights it with that yellow and black band. That's pretty neat. That is super cool. That is really quite nifty. That is neat. Yeah, so uh, we can see where the problems lie. Basically, uh, we're almost backstuffed, which is cool, right? We're just waiting for the last little bit of fissile fuel to get made here. Now, I'm going to absolutely speed these machines up. But before we do that, I want to get into quantum entanglation. Quantum entangle loopers are a good way uh, to to power this, uh, or, or to transfer basically anything in mechanism. Uh, so if we pop this guy down here, let's make sure our sidedness here um for gases i want you to basically input from the right right for gases uh and everything else we don't have to worry about pigments and infused sites i honestly don't even know what half these things are and i've never used them uh but gases config right we can see input um dark red on the right that's good to go now what i'm going to do is pop down my quantum entangleloper so the quantum entangleloper you set up channels and you give them names and the unique name for a channel will designate um, that allows multiple entangleopers to connect to each other. And it basically lets you transfer items or fluids or energy or gases or a handful of other things wirelessly across the world, which is neat. Uh, so if we were to set up a side config here, first off, I'm just gonna turn everything off. I wonder, if, like it would be cool if you could shift click and it would do that for like every type, but meh. But basically right now, all, all transfers are off, right? But for gases, I'm gonna allow an input on the right, okay? So now you're allowed to accept gases from the right. And I'm gonna set this to fissile fuel as the channel name. And that should be it. So we're ready to go. Daryl 20, frequency fissile fuel, okay? Now this guy is not pushing gas just yet into uh, the quantum entangleloper. We will set that up in a minute. Before I do that, I wanna head off to bed because it's clearly nighttime and we're ready for a nap but then after that what i want to do is pop out to our nuclear area and get this thing set up um now should i bring a tank out here it might not be a terrible idea just a basic chemical tank for fissile fuels and uh generally speaking i like to and you know what else i might i might get well 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 let's get a basic pressurized tube here's a note about tubes and pipes and cables and all these things from mechanism uh they not only transfer things but they store things okay so if we look at tubes for example we'll see that the basic tube each tube holds like four thousand millibuckets aka four buckets worth of stuff um the ultimate tube on the other hand holds like a million so while ultimate tubes are great for large amounts of transfer, they also store large amounts. So if you don't want that buffer sitting around, don't use the top tier tube. Uh, and that's what I generally do with my reactors and stuff. So if we bring up our chunk loading map, we can see that here is probably about where uh, I'm going to want my fission reactor port to be. And that's where I'm going to stick my gas tube and my tank that I just made. Okay. Now the tank, we're gonna, again, configure everything for off. And then on the top, we're gonna allow input, and on the bottom, we're gonna do output, okay? And you're also configured for eject on, so it'll automatically output fissile fuel into the fission reactor. Now the fission reactor is turned off, so this is safe to do at this point, right? Um, what I'm gonna do now is probably, I'm gonna pop back home. And I'm pretty sure quantum entanglopers have some kind of buffer built in. So once I configure this guy to push fissile fuel into here, it will actually go into the buffer. But I don't know how much it is, and I've kind of always wondered, so maybe now's a good time to check that out. Um, so we've got 64,000 buckets here. What if I turn off this and set this guy to output? Is he gonna drain? Well, there goes all 64,000. Well, that's cool. Okay. Um, that's neat. I don't know how much it stores, but apparently more than 64,000. And I assume if I do this red input again, it's drained all the fissile fuel and it's all in the quantum entangleloper somewhere. Where? 
Oh. In another dimension or something? Couldn't tell you. So I don't know exactly how much it stores. Maybe someday I'll learn. But it's definitely more than the 64,000 that we had stored in that tank. So now we want to get that out of the quantum entangleloper dimension, if you will. Uh, so all I got to do is pop this guy down. And we're going to configure him for the side. Uh, again, everything off. Is it important to turn everything off? Probably not. Does Dyer like doing it? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and then we want gases to eject on and output out the bottom. And what should happen is that should work. Gases, eject on, output bottom, input on top. Gas is where you go. Fuel tank empty. All right, and then we want fissile fuel as our channel. So I hit set. Boom. He should be getting his fissile fuel. He dumped it all in there. And now all that fissile fuel made its way into the fuel tank. Great, right? Now, as we can see, the small amount of fissile fuel that we had is a paltry and measly amount. So not nearly enough. So now is when we're going to want to get our upgrades. Now, do any of these accept fluid upgrades uh let's see so gas upgrade is what i'm looking at no 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 yes so one gas upgrade set so we need one set of gas upgrades no so literally just one set of eight gas upgrades and that would be good Okay, and then let's do 64 speeds. We're going to need more sand. I might have enough. Nope, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> today we learned. Uh, did I turn on advanced tooltips? I did at some point. I don't know how, but whatever. Let me get more sand, and I really need to set up a cobble works. Can we do that next? Would anybody complain if I did that? I don't think so. I think that would be fine, right? Uh, mining laser, where are you at? Around here somewhere. There you are. Be right back. All right, so let's do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and that should be cool. So I'm going to do one and one, one and one, and we're just going to stick all the speed and energy upgrades in here that we can. Cool. And that should be pretty good. And then I'm done with this one, right? You and you. You and you. You and you. You and you. Now we have lots of fissile fuel being produced. Booyah! Probably gonna want some more energy and speed. Just a few more. Just want to make sure we're groovy here. Uh, electrolytic separator seems to be doing okay with oxygen, so I may not speed him up, but water vapor looks like it could use a little bit of a boost, maybe, or no. Uh, I think it's just because this guy has a giant buffer, so I think we're okay on water vapor, but maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to throw a little bit his way. Now, my main concern at this point is power. Yep, big surprise. Uh, you are transferring 21,000 RF, because all these machines, fully overclocked like this, are probably choking this thing out. So what I could do is a transfer limit of around 10. And that would limit the power in these machines. Now, at some point, we will backstop, which will be nice. Right? Um theory but shortly we'll have lots of power gen which will be good see look enderman just everywhere dropping rooted dirt in my base explain explain I'm telling you endermen are weird in this pack am i wrong they're very they're very enderman-y now, how's this looking over here would be the next question. Oh, yeah, now we're making progress. Booyah. 
So should we try turning this bad boy on? I think so. So first thing we're gonna wanna do, now I think this produces steam, right? So we're going to need this to be transferred with an ultimate uh, pressurized tube. That would be this guy, because I'm pretty sure this dude does steam, right? Now does he need, let's see, I'm gonna activate this guy. And what you should be getting is steam input. Wow, you're a little bit louder than I hoped. So it's producing nuclear waste. Where are all your steam going? Is it all? Hey, there we go. Yeah, look, we're producing power. Yay. Yeah, so we do have a little bit of steam coming in. Nice. Now, we also have water for output. Um, now, how are you valid without... Are you... A, oh, you're a structural glass. I was going to... It looked weird. I was like, wait, why? It, it, it looked like there was nothing there, but it was just structural glass. Now, here's my question. If I had a node, and we configured you to sit here... Right, uh, as an input. Okay, now remember there's a little bit of nuclear waste in here, so we have to be very careful about this. Uh, but let's get our configurator, not output waste, not output coolant, but actually input. We want to leave that there, right? Um, now we do have to figure out the nuclear waste handling in a bit, which we will. We will figure out nuclear waste handling, don't you worry. Uh, in terms of energy, what I probably want to do, let's handle energy first. Let's get a flux plug and a flux point. Here's what I usually like to do. This is this is very dire. If you've seen this in videos, in any of Dyer's videos before, you should recognize that this is a thing that I do. Uh, I like to have a separate thing for generators. Okay? So what I do... My goodness, your sidedness is just all over the place and in use, isn't it? Holy cow, are you in use everywhere. Are you outputting energy? You are. Are you also outputting energy? You are. So what if I got rid of you guys? Would this be horrible to do? So now you're outputting energy right now on the top I would like you to input with a point and then I probably don't want you connected at all okay so on the top of this guy you're gonna be an input and I'm gonna get a flux plug and he's gonna be the generator side And there's a reason that I do this, but first turbine valve go here, you get connected. You're gonna get a new network called generators. So anything that generates power will go on this network. Create, right? And now you can be bound to the generators network, okay? Now I don't want you to have any kind of limit, so we'll bypass limit, right? Um, and then you're gonna basically receive power from this guy, which you currently have about 76,000-ish. Um, let's go home. And if I bind you to the generators network, you should get that power and dump it into here. Okay. Now we should be able to turn on our, our generator and get that cooking. Now the next step we want to do is get the excess water that gets the steam turns into water right and that i don't know is there a measure here yeah so the steam is still producing he's still outputting a little bit of power so like one or two fe per tick with a little bit of steam that's in there still it's such a tiny amount all right so let's get this thing turned on and automated sound like a plan so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to hook up laser nodes on the opposite side of this so south side and you're going to want to extract fluids but i want you to extract a lot a lot of fluids so let's get ready for a large number of overclockers here 
I don't know if we're going to need multiple cards or not. So that's what we're going to prepare for. Okay. So with you, 8,000 millibuckets or eight, bu or eight buckets per tick. And I'm curious, is there a measurement of how much water is in here? Steam input, steam. Max water up output is uh, 1 million millibuckets per tick. That's your max output though. All right, so let's insert on this side into the reactor port and then a quick little bit of laser wrenching later and these guys should be good to go. Let's turn on the reactor and see what happens. Activate. Wow, that's loud. How about 10%? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so are you like getting steam? You seem to be. All right, so here's the deal. This guy's running very slowly, okay? Uh, in fact, we're not producing any more fissile fuel. So let's go find out what's going on with that. Because I've had a couple AFK moments here and I don't know what we're out of, but I suspect something. So you're good on this. Oh, really? Are we out of uranium? Okay, cool. So we should probably be processing uranium. Uh, what is... You can do this line. Okay, let's 100% process uranium over here. Boom. That should work. Nice. All right. Everybody comes back to life. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Everybody coming back to life. Out the door. I love I love the advanced charge water. If McJD ever stops updating RF tools, I will be very sad. And I will literally just make a mod that has this item in it. Because it is just the best. But anyway, we are now once again producing fissile fuel, which is which is beautiful. Look at it. Look at it all filling back up there. Now let's get some uh, better stuff going on. So if we activate this guy, we'll see that he's very slowly but surely producing nuclear waste. If we want to speed that process up, all we got to do is adjust the burn rate. So instead of 0.1 millibuckets per tick, I'm going to set you to 1 millibucket per tick. And that will basically produce a lot more heat and a lot more nuclear waste and a lot more steam uh and this guy's now you know doing about 20 mb per tick 20,000 now are you set up correctly on the south side because shouldn't you be extracting fluids i would think but it doesn't seem to be right i mean granted we're like you know and stuff i'm curious if i turned you off for a minute what would happen to the water here? Water's dropping now. Are you getting water? You are. Aha! All right, well, that's neat at least. But I'm suspecting you're not getting enough water. You're probably not. But if I... And then we're going to want... A node overclocker. See, we're getting low on coolant. That's bad. You don't want to let that happen. If that happens, you're going to have a bad day. But if I pop that down, are we cool now? We're cooler. <laughs> Get it? Cool. Get it? Get it? Now, how about on the south side here, we do this extract. South side, this extract. Okay, and then on the south side, we bump you up to that much. I'm curious if we can like keep up with the flow of water. Now, we may absolutely, oh look, we're keeping up. Nice. All right, that's cool. Now here's the deal though, if I bump this up to a two, I bet we're gonna have a net loss. Yeah, buddy. So we're more than likely, more than likely gonna need to use um, the ultimate uh, 
mechanical pipes. Because they have a pump rate of 32,000 millibuckets per tick. So they can pump a lot better than, than these guys. Um, so in theory, our max per side here would be eight times nine. So per side, it's definitely better, but it gets expensive making it go that fast. See, now we're good, right? We're getting that gain here. Uh, now, how are we doing power-wise? Are we producing a healthy amount of power? Yes, we are. Nice, 11,000. Sweet. Uh, now, we're also building up a buffer here, and that's a little bit bad. So number one, I want to dump excess. That's that's a, that's a good thing to do. Uh, but but there's another problem that we're going to have, okay? So you're outputting like, you know, 10 to 12,000 R of a tick. Um, and if we pop home, I'm going to assume... <laughs> That in the basement here, this guy's full, right? Pretty close. Oh yeah, I also want to bypass the limit. Also, I don't think I chunk loaded that thing. So I bet all the chunks just unloaded, which is, you know, always a good time. So let's make sure this thing's chunk loaded. Because that's a, you know, that's an important step. I'm like, why is my power not? Oh, right, chunk loading's the thing. We're going to need to, we're going to need to do that. We're gonna definitely need that. Okay, now if we pop home, we should see a very full. Yep. See? And we're dip this, right? So I could probably clip a couple of you guys, save me some lava. You know, that resource that I have an infinite amount of. Yeah, we should we should be conservative with that infinite resource of ours. Um, but there's a problem. And the problem is is that if the energy storage in that steam turbine completely backstuffs. It can be a problem. Um, so what I'm gonna make is an energy trash can, okay? And the reason I want an energy trash can is to void any excess energy from the reactor that we don't need because aforementioned bad things happen if the energy completely fills up the internal buffer of the steam turbine. I think the steam turbine like gets gummed up or something. I've seen this happen before and it always causes a big boom and we don't want big booms. Big booms are bad, trust the dyer. Okay, always keep an eye on your temperature here. Okay, so let's um, plan for that eventuality, right? So all we got to do is make sure that within this chunk boundary, what I would like to have is a flux point Okay, ba -ba 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 -ba. with a priority of minus 100. Pretty sure that'll work on the generators network. And he should be, and then I also wanna disable limit, boom. So this guy's in total making 45,000 RF a tick, which is great, okay? You'll notice that 33, 32,000 is going into the trash can. That means that we're probably around 12 or 13,000 coming in through here. See, 12 or 13,000, okay? Because what's happening is priority one, well, priority zero, right? Which is currently the lowest, well, second lowest priority, right? is, is going into the cell over there in our base. Negative 100 is going into the trash can, okay? So now, you know, we have Pretty much any overflow of power goes directly into the trash can. I'm cool with that, right? And that's not bad at all. Now, in theory, I don't see any other real need to have higher fissile fuel production here, right? Because now we're producing 22,000 R of a tick, and we're only voiding around 10,000 R of a tick, so we're barely using half of it. We're barely using half of it. But that'll probably change in you know the very near future. Um, and we're going to want to start scaling this up. Now, one more thing we probably want to set up is a little bit of smartness. So we're going to want, let's scram you, everything off. And I'm going to want some fission reactor. I just put him away. Logic adapters. Um, and what these guys can be used for is a little bit of intelligent routing. Um, I'm going to have two down. 
And basically, I'm going to configure this guy for activation. Activate the reactor when powered, deactivate when unpowered. And by, by powered, we mean redstone powered. Okay, this guy, I want to have output when the reactor reaches dangerous temperatures, high temperature. Okay, damage critical, insufficient fuel, high temperature is when I want this to happen. Okay, so you're going to emit a redstone sig signal when we're at a high temperature point. Okay. And I wouldn't mind a little super circuit maker action here. And basically, what I'd like is to have a lever. Did I put my levers away? Why would I do that? Actually, I don't know where my levers are, so I'm just going to get a new one because I have no idea where they went. And let's get our screwdriver here. That should be cool. Boop. Do you not? Do I need a redstone dust in the interim? All oh, right, I need you to that. I don't do enough with Super Circuit Maker, and I should do more. I really should. Um, and then I'm gonna want. Whoop. Okay, and then. that okay so that has reactor running that has it not running okay so now we basically want to turn this into an and gate so that basically this has to be off and this has to be on so that would be an exclusive or gate right and that's what we're going to do all right so here's what i'm thinking we basically make an and gate but like invert it but it'll be inverted because of the way Minecraft hand gates work. Uh, sound cool. Uh, so here's the deal, right? Uh, if I just created like a little doohickey here and we made that this, and then we ran this out this way, and then I had this lever, and I want this connected here, and this connected here, I'm gonna turn you off. And then if I had you and you, see how it's running now? Okay, now I need to change this up a little bit actually. So this kind of cool, Dyer not good at redstone. So if this is on, I want it to be off. So that if we emit a redstone signal saying too high of heat, it goes off is the gist. But I also want this guy to be able to turn it on and off. Um, I want him to be able to turn it off completely for me. Or you know what I could just do? No, I kind of want, yeah, I kind of want something different. Like that's one way you could do it. You could just go with like, basically this is just a not gate, right? And I can either manually turn it off or heat will turn it off. You know, that's a lot simpler. I don't see why I wouldn't do that. Isn't that like a million times simpler? Why don't I want to do this, anybody? Somebody explain to me why I wouldn't want to do this. Literally just a not gate. Doesn't even need to be this. It could just be a redstone torch, right? Because then what will happen is if I want to turn it off manually, boom, it's off, right? Um, if the heat triggers it, then it would also turn off. Now we could also make this an RS latch, so that if the heat ever triggers it, it would stay off until I manually turn it back on. That might be kind of cool. That could be cool. So effectively, right, let's make this a button. We'll probably want two buttons here. Okay, and then we're gonna want this coming in from this side. And this coming in from this side. Okay. Now an RS latch would look something like this. I'm just winging this because I'm not good at this. You know Dyer, he ain't good at this. So that would be here with redstone out to here. 
and that would be connected to that. And then this would also loop back to here. Right. And then this guy actually goes straight into here. Right. So if I hit this button, it turns on. Oh, hang on. Close, close, almost. Oh, hold on. I want this. to be a thing. There we go. I just forgot that connection. So I was close, right? And then this should turn it off. Hey, it works. There's an RS latch. See? So look, if this thing ever overheats, right? So if the heat level climbed to a point that was dangerous, it would trigger a redstone signal, which would turn the reactor off and keep it off until I came over here and manually turned it on. Now, no amount of triggering this will do anything. See? Nothing happening. Nothing doing. It's fine. Okay, only the other button will trigger it. So this is like a basic RS nor latch kind of thing. See, I know I pretty much had it right. Um, and then boop, turns it on, right? Now it's gonna stay on until either I turn it off or the heat turns it off, right? Because this guy's configured to be a high temperature output. Okay, how cool is that? That works, right? I like that, I like that approach. So what happens is the redstone signal comes in here, it turns off this torch, which allows this torch to be on. Right now, when I activate this redstone signal, it forces this torch off, which turns this torch on and keeps that torch off. See, so the redstone signal is keeping that torch off. This redstone signal will turn off this torch, allowing this one to go on. Eh, I, that's, you know, not, not too shabby. I like it. I think it's cool. I hope you all think it's cool. Guess we'll see what happens, right? Now, how hot can I make this thing before we, like, you know, run into a problem? We are definitely not keeping up with 10. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. Getting close! We're gonna need to feed... We're gonna absolutely need to feed water in here way faster than we currently are. Like, way more water. Probably, you know, a little bit of bananas level watering. But we'll... We'll figure it out. I'm debating if I want to like go ham with laser IO nodes or not. Because it could it could get a little bit bananas, right? But we'll, we'll see. Doable. Doable. Now you guys also draining? You are also draining quite a bit. But in theory, if we get enough water flow going here, we should be able to pull off, I think, 50. We could get up as high as 50 without too much of a problem. But then we got to start looking at nuclear waste. That will be a problem. That's something we're going to want to deal with. That is absolutely something we're going to want to deal with. Um, now, here's my recommendation. Going forward, don't use the activate and scram buttons. Always use this. Because if you activate with activate, like this, this will not turn off the reactor. And now we're in trouble, right? So always activate the reactor with redstone and deactivate the reactor with redstone. I wish there was a way I could like disable these buttons because muscle memory, I always go in there and click it and then be like, why'd my reactor explode? But you get the idea. Cool. All right. So I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode. So let's wrap up here. We'll come back next time. We'll play around with um, more nuclear reactors and we'll look at handling nuclear waste. So two things we're going to want to do. Process it into polonium, process it into plutonium, and that'll be fun. But for now, it's wrapping up points. So, Daryl Twenty signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time to play more with nuclear reactors and mechanism. For now, take it easy.